now. Once upon a time, on a fine summer's night, Orley went to the barn to see if things is all right. Well, he no sooner stepped inside the old barn door till a little bitty mouse popped up through the floor. He said, Orley, how to do to do? If you feel like dancing, got some music for you. Mr. Mouse Orley says that's a mighty fine tune. We'd ought to have a dance some night pretty soon. Just then, Dingle Jolly come a waltzing through the door, a tootin' his harmonica like he'd never done before. Orley's pa heard the music and he went to the house, got his old guitar, and said, "Hit it, Mr. Mouse!" And the shucking machine said, "Sounds mighty sweet," and he shucked out a rhythm that couldn't be beat. And the hired man shouted out a high diddle diddle, and he reached in the feed box and hauled out his fiddle. The neighbors they heard it from miles around. They come to Orley's barn for the big hole down. There's the Browns and the Townsers and the Neelys and the Lees, the Nixes and the Wixes and the Hickses and the Keys. The kids come too. There's Sally Bell and Sue, Ned, Fred, Ted, Jed, Willie, Tom, and Lou. It was do she do and promenade all. Bow to your corner and twice around the hall. And old Mr. Duck with his quack 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 said, "Step aside, folks! Don't hold me back." <laughs> and the moo cow moved and strutted out of her stall, bowed to the folks, and went swinging down the hall. And the hens in the pen and the old white pig come out on the floor and scratched out a jig. <laughs> And the big red barn give a heave and a jolt. Said, "Folks, I'm a dancing. You better grab hold." Oh, the music got better as the night went on, and it looked like they were gonna dance till dawn. But the big red barn sat down with a rumble. The hen started moping, and the pig took a tumble. The moo cow slipped and fell down a crack, while old Mr. Duck fell flat on his back. The neighbors took the kid and said, "Time to go to bed." The hired man's fiddle gave a squawk and went dead. Chuckin' machine busted down with a gunk, and then all his paw had to go shoot a skunk. Dingle got tired and went in the house, and the old cat come and chased away the mouse. Well, that finished the evening for our little boy friend. Just goes to show that all good things has to end. That's all. Well, now one fine day, little old Orley is out of playing in the woods, and after a while, he got tired and sat down under a tree to rest. But I'd gone as he no sooner sat down till he felt something grab his arms. He looked down, and there's two green shiny hands with only three fingers. And there's a hanging on to him and a trying to drag him down a big hole in the ground. He tried to hold back, but they pulled him right down the hole, and he landed with a bump, right in the middle of a crowd of strange-looking critters, all of them with long, skinny arms and three-fingered green hands. And there's a waving at him and a singing a song. Ha ha ha! He he he! Beware of the hand with the fingers three. Beware of the shiny shiny green you see, 'cause you're in the land of the poison ivy. It's too late now. You got to take your turn, 'cause everything we touch has got to burn. Well, now Orley was scared and he tried to get away, but they reached out their three-fingered hands and grabbed him. And his arms started to burn and itch, and he started to scratch in them. And this started the funny-looking people to singing again. Goody, goody, goody! Just look what he's a doing. He's a helping us to get the poison brewing. 'Cause itching and a scratching and a scratching and a itching are the very, very, very best things to do. Itching and a scratching and a scratching and a itching will spread the poison ivy all over you. Well, sir, Orley, he quit a scratching when he heard this, but he still burned and itched, and he didn't know what to do. But just then he heard a funny sound. He looked around, and here come a whole bunch of bars of yeller soap, and there's a marching along, a singing. Soap, soap, yeller soap, we're the ones to give you hope. Rub, rub in the tub, scrub the ivy from you, bub. Well, sir, right after them was some bottles of pink stuff a marching along, and there's a singing too. Oh, we're fine, fine, fine. We're the Calomine. We'll help 
Bite the three green leaves that shine. If you have any trouble with the poison ivy, then you'd better call us immediately. Well, sir, they all started to fight in the ivy critter. And in a minute, the poison ivy was gone. And just then, Orly woke up. He'd fell asleep, and he says to himself, My, oh, my, what a bad dream that was. But just then, he felt a itching and a burning on his arms, and he looked down, and there's a whole lot of plants with three shiny leaves. I guess you know what that was, don't you? Yep, poison ivy. Well, he run right home and told his ma to get the yellow soap and calamine, and she did right away. And because he fixed it up so quick, all he had was a little itching for a day or so. Of course, it ain't everybody's that lucky, so maybe you just better watch awful close for them three shiny leaves, or instead of swimming and a playing and a laughing, you're liable to be a itching and a scratching and a burning. That's all. Well, now, once upon a time, on a real dark night, little Orly, he's a-walking through the woods a-looking for lightning bugs, and all of a sudden he come to a big old pond. And there, right in the middle, and lying flat on his back, was the old moon. He was a-shining and a-shimmering, and he is a-yelling, Help! Help! Well, Orly, he waded out in the pond, and he says, What is the matter, Mr. Moon? And the old moon, he says, Well... I was a coming up over the mountain tonight, and I tripped on a confounded pine tree, fell down, and rolled clean to this puddle. I think I sprained a couple of beams, and I'd sure appreciate some help. Well, sir, Orly, he helped him up, and took him home, and washed the mud off under the pump, and straightened a few moonbeams, and he felt pretty good. He says, thank you kindly, Orly. And now, how am I going to get back in the sky? Folks is a-waiting to go on moonlight boat rides, and dogs is a-waiting to howl at me, and I gotta get back up there. If I can only get hold of the edge of the Milky Way, I can make it. Well, Orly, he says, let's climb the old oak tree. That might be high enough. So they started to climb. Well, sir, about ten feet up, Mr. Moon got his beams all tangled in the branches, and Orly had to saw them loose, so that didn't work. I gun is, Orly says. There's nothing high enough around here. Say, I know an idea. I remember once when Pete the pump was a-going like sixty and the crank flew off his flywheel and busted a winder on the next farm down. You hang on to the flywheel and when it gets going real fast, just let go and you'll fly home in no time. Well, sir, Mr. Moon grabbed a hold of the flywheel and Pete started a turning. Well, sir, Mr. Moon, he let go all right, but he didn't quite clear the corn crib, and Orly found him a-lying there all full of dents. Well, Orly, he fixed him up again, and then he says, I got another idea. You set in my swing, and I'll swing you, and when you get as high as you can go, just slide out and make a grab for the Milky Way. Well, sir, Mr. Moon, he decided to try it. He went real slow at first, and then Orly pushed faster and faster and faster, and when the swing was as high as it could go, Mr. Moon slid out. <laughs> I've gone as he got one of his beams tangled on the seat and it throwed him right in the rhubarb patch. Well, sir, he is mighty discouraged, but Orly, he says, I got it now, and he took Mr. Moon up to the house, got his kite string, tied it on the moon, and started a running. In a minute, the old night wind caught Mr. Moon, and before you could say boo, he was away up in the air. Pretty soon, he climbed up on the Milky Way and dropped all his string down to him. You know something? You might have seen the moon that night. He had a big old dent in one edge. Anyways, he got it fixed, and when he comes over the mountain, he's real careful now. And he always peeks in all his window and gives him a big old silvery wink. That's all. Well, now, once upon a time, Orly's mommy was a-cooking his breakfast, and she made him a great big old pancake about as big as a barn door. And just as Orly was about to pour about a gallon of syrup and a pound of butter on it, the old pancake flopped over, and I gone as he rolled right off that there plate and out the door. Well, Orly, he run right after him, and he says, Stop, pancake, stop! But the old pancake, he just laughed, and he says, Ha, 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 I'm a-telling you true, Orly, I'm a-gonna roll away from you. Well, he did. Pretty soon he rolled past the old rooster. 
The old rooster, he says, Come here, Pancake. I'm going to devour you. Eat him up, he meant. The old Pancake, he says, Ha, 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 cock-a-doodle-doo. I got away from Orleano. Get away from you. Well, he did. And he rolled and he rolled. Then he passed a duck. And the duck says, I ain't it yet today. Come here, Cake. But the old Pancake, he just rolls faster. And he says, Ha, 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 got away from Doodle-doo. I got away from Orleano. Get away from you. Well, he did, and pretty soon he rolled by an old goose, and she licked her beak and says, Mmm, mm, a creepy Suzette. Get over here, creepy, and I'll eat you up. The old cake, he just kept a-rolling, and he says, Got away from a duck and a doodle-doo. Got away from Oriental. Get away from you. Well, he did. He rolled and he rolled. And long about noontime, he rolled past a corn crib. A little old mouse stuck his head out and says, Come here, you worn-out waffle. I'm going to eat you down. But the old pancake, he just went faster, and he says, Got away from a goose, a duck a doodle doo Got away from Oriental, get away from you. Well, he did. He rolled and he rolled. And late that afternoon, he come to a big, wide river. Well, he couldn't swim, and even if he could, he'd get all soggy and gooey. So as he sat down to figure things out. Well, just then a big old pig come along, and she says, <laughs> You aiming to cross this year river? The old pancake, he says, oh, I aim too if I can keep dry. And then the old pig, she says, Folks don't call me Marge the Barge for nothing. Hop up on my nose and I'll swim you across. <laughs> well, the old cake, he hopped up on the pig's nose and yup. <laughs> pig at him up. Just goes to show you what happens if and you don't learn to swim. <laughs> That's all.